Google recently announced that starting on May 2nd of 2022, dedicated TrueView for Shopping campaigns will no longer run. This is because they are making all video campaigns shoppable, and we're going to walk through the new setup. Now, I'm also going to call this TrueView for Shopping throughout the video. It's going to be a hard habit for me to break, but we'll go over which campaign goals can now create video shopping campaigns. We'll go over the campaign setups, and most importantly, a few things that you should remember before launching your new shoppable video campaigns. Before we get into setting up a TrueView for Shopping campaign, we need to make sure that our Merchant Center account is linked with Google Ads. You can easily check that by going up to Tools and Settings, and under Setup, head down to Linked Accounts. We can see this one is already linked. If you haven't done so yet, that option will be somewhere down below. Now, since this campaign type is a mix between YouTube and shopping, I'm going to assume you already have some product feeds created. If you don't, here are some requirements that are needed before running a TrueView for Shopping campaign. The first thing is that your product feed has to have at least four products in it. You'll see in the campaign setup that you must add at least four products to show alongside your video ad. Odds are you have way more than four products, so most likely it's not a big deal. Also within your product feed, you do have the ability to add alternate images, and that's fine. But for TrueView for Shopping, only the primary image is going to be used within the ad. If that changes what image you would rather show for a video campaign, you may want to create a different product feed. And then, last thing, you'll need to go into Merchant Center and make sure that you have shopping ads enabled. If you're already doing the standard shopping campaigns, you're fine. All right, so everything is good here. Let's go back and start creating a campaign. This is an old account here. We really don't have anything, so I'm just going to go and create a campaign, and then we're going to start a new one. When TrueView for Shopping first came around, the only campaign goal that we could use was product and brand consideration. As things have changed, part of the new setup is that we now have more campaign goal options. You can choose sales, leads, website traffic, and as we know, these three are part of the video action campaign set. If you're interested about video action campaigns, you can watch that video here. But it was actually fairly recently that they brought back product and brand consideration as an option for TrueView for Shopping. So we get everything on the top row, plus brand awareness and reach. This is shopping here. Let's say I'm focused on sales, so that I'm gonna choose that one. Next, you would just wanna choose your goals. That's gonna be different for each account, so we can just go and click continue. And next, we wanna choose the campaign type. We're talking video campaigns here, so that's a no-brainer. And then we can click continue. A lot of the stuff in the settings for the campaign setup, I'm going to skip, because I really wanna focus on just the shopping portion. You can go up and edit your campaign goal if you need to. Just remember, for video campaigns, once you select a campaign goal and launch the campaign, you publish it, whatever, you're not allowed to go back in and change the campaign goal. You can do that for search campaigns, but not for video campaigns. So finalize whichever one you want within your first campaign setup. There you can name your campaign, get your bid strategy in place. Now let's go and enter a daily budget just so we can move on. Scrolling down a little bit, we have networks, locations, your languages, your content exclusions. Now, depending on which campaign goal you have selected for your video campaign, you're gonna see different ad extension possibilities. So we see site link extensions here. There are lead form extensions. There are related video extensions, a few different options. But right underneath that, we do see product feed. This is what we want. So let's expand this option. And yes, we wanna use a feed to show our products alongside our ads. This account I'm using makes it easy. It only has one product feed feeding in from Shopify. So it was automatically included. But if you have a variety of feeds, you can see the little magnifying glass. Just click on the field, search for the feed that you would want to use. Now, one question you may be asking right away is, can we include multiple feeds in a campaign? No, you cannot. You only get to choose one product feed. And as we can see as we're setting up the campaign, the product feed is set at the campaign level. So if you want to test out a variety of different feeds to put different products alongside your video ads, you're going to have to create multiple different campaigns. So keep the campaign structure in mind. That's definitely going to affect your ad group structure where your targeting options live, knowing that your products are set at the campaign level. Next, I am going to stop at additional settings and I'm going to expand devices. One thing I do want to mention is going to be TV devices. Our shopping cards do not show up on TV devices but our ads can still run. I'm definitely gonna mention that again towards the end just so it sticks in your head. So if your goal is to have people see your product cards next to your videos, I do recommend turning off TV screens. I still strongly believe in the value of TV screens. That is because a lot of people watch TV with their phone in their hands. So if they see a good product video, they could still pull up their phone and then look for the product. 
But if I really want to focus on getting more clicks on my shopping cards, I would suggest turning off TV screens and potentially creating a different campaign just for TV screens if you still feel it's valuable. I'm going to skip over frequency capping. We recently did a video on that one. You could check that one out here. And once we get to the ad group creation, we see the product filter. I'm going to expand this one. By default, all products within the product feed that you attached earlier up above in the campaign will be used alongside your video ads. The all products filter is probably beneficial if you're running an overall branding video, no real particular audience in mind with your targeting. So it doesn't really matter what the user sees. However, if you are using retargeting, maybe you have a specific video created and that video content really speaks to a specific product category. So you already know users are interested in a certain type of product. You got the creative to back it up. Now you want to put specific products alongside that video creative to really hone in on the user intent. So you can go down and select specific products going down just a little bit here. We can see in the search bar right here where my mouse is, you can search by the title of the product in your feed, the URL that you've also included in the product feed or your product ID. It's going to be really helpful if you have a lot of products in your feed. Or you can do what I'm doing right now and just go right down the line and manually start selecting a few different products. You see in the blue box, and I mentioned earlier in the video, you have to include at least four products. If you look in this highlighted section here, it says I have seven selected, but the maximum is 50. This is fairly new. In the original TrueView for shopping, you can only select up to 10 different products, but now it's 50. So that's a move I like. Depending on your product selection and the varieties of products that you may have, Sometimes 10 wasn't enough and then you'd have to go and create more campaigns to make sure all the different product varieties could be included. So this does make things a little bit more efficient. Good move. Now, instead of specific products, the next product filter is a custom label. And these are going to be based upon your custom label columns within your product feed. So if you go down to product attribute, we see the five options. So I just chose one label. And let's say I have a video promoting my deals for Black Friday and I have a special column where all my products that are part of the deal on Black Friday are noted within that column. So now when I'm blasting out my Black Friday deals in my video content, I'm telling Google, you can include any product that has this Black Friday label in the column custom label zero. It's kind of like a combination of the all products and specific products. You kind of know which ones are going to be included, but you don't get to handpick them. And yes, I know there is another product filter for no products, but that defeats the whole purpose of why I'm creating this video. All right, next you can go onto your targeting options. Not going to go through that. We have a video that's still pretty up to date on YouTube targeting options. You can check that one out here. So now we can scroll down and create an ad. Just like any in-stream ad, your video has to be uploaded to your channel on YouTube, but I'm just going to pick a random video on YouTube. It's not a client or anything and just paste it into the field. I paused the ad preview so it wouldn't keep moving. If I go down a little bit, here's where you would go in and fill in the rest of your ad. You still do need a final URL, and that is going to be for your call to action extension. If you're doing a generic branding video with the all products filter, ton of different products, maybe send them to the highest level shop page. If your product or shopping cards do show up, say I'm clicking on this purse, the user will be sent to that purse product URL. Same thing with the shoe and the watch and the mixer. These are going to be four different URLs depending on what you've put in your product feed. Your call to action extension URL is going to be the generic one that you have put in to satisfy the ad. Because like I said earlier, your product cards aren't guaranteed to show and we'll see that in some of the different previews. So have a URL that makes sense with the video content that you are promoting and the understanding of that might be the only link a user can click on some of your ads. So this is the newer responsive video format. So you add in your normal headline, a longer headline and description, choose your companion banner, and then you would go down and create and publish your campaign. I'm not going to do that because this is a demo account. I could go on and look specifically at how this ad could appear on desktop or on Google video partners. However, it's not worth my time. And why? That is because at the time I'm recording this video, products will only appear on a mobile device in portrait mode. If the user is watching YouTube with their phone on the side in horizontal mode, they could still see my in-stream ad, but the products aren't going to be there. So before you're launching your campaign, you may want to go back to the device settings and turn off desktop. I didn't mention that one earlier because I still think it's too valuable of a placement. I'd rather start off with just turning off TV first, but I'm going to leave that one completely up to you. So now we have some idea of what a shopping experience could look like on YouTube. That's when you would go down and create your campaign. 
And to wrap up this video, I want to talk about three things that you need to keep in mind when running TrueView for shopping campaigns. The first one is that you must include a call to action extension. It's required for any campaigns using a product feed. Now you can include whatever you want within the 10 character limits, but if you choose not to include one, Google ads will automatically apply the call to action of shop now. Again, for call to action buttons in our video campaigns, they're only 10 characters. So if you can think of something more clever or maybe more appealing when viewing products than shop now, go ahead and include your call to action extension. I've mentioned this one a few times while speaking and in other videos, and this one really, really bugs me, but it is what it is. You still cannot make TrueView for shopping campaigns in Google Ads Editor. It has always bothered me. What does this mean? This means if you wanna create a variety of different campaigns, testing out different products that may show up alongside the in-stream video, you're gonna to have to manually create every single one of those campaigns. And when I say manually, that means you're gonna to have to build them within the Google Ads interface. So editor is not an option for now. Will it ever come? I thought I would be here by now with as long as TrueView for Shopping has been around. So the answer is, who knows? Let's not hold our breath because I don't think it's coming anytime soon. And the last point, is that your ads can still run without your products visible. If your goal was leads, the lead form extension will get preference, even though you may have product feeds attached to a leads campaign. So the amount of impressions that your product cards get will most likely be less than the total impressions of your videos. And that's it for the updated TrueView for Shopping process. Not too much has changed over the past couple years, but I will say for the most part, I think it's an easier process to get shopping cards set up for your YouTube videos. As I said earlier, TrueView for Shopping was only available for the product and brand consideration campaign goal. So now that it is implemented in a variety of other campaign goals and brought back into product and brand consideration, you're not as limited as you are on the campaign setup. It may take a little bit to test view campaigns to see how your audience likes to interact with your products. If your products aren't impulse buys, have the mentality of maybe driving users to those product pages so you're building larger audiences and then get in front of those users potentially with some dynamic retargeting through a variety of platforms. There's gonna be accounts out there where people will be ready to buy. It all depends on the message you're showing them and the product that's in front of them. But there's gonna be a good chunk of users who don't go to YouTube to buy products. However, it can be great for building awareness to those users to not only showcase that a certain product exists, but it can drive those users to a page where they can become more familiar with your product selection and maybe come back later on to convert. If you have any questions about TrueView for Shopping and the new process and setup, or if you have any comments on how your experience with TrueView for Shopping has been, let everyone know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.